from the DFW that's Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. Hope everybody having a great productive Wednesday. Hope everybody got everybody getting things done, got things accomplished, but most importantly, that you make stuff happen. So if they're excited to be back here once again, everybody know for the month of May, we're doing the new faces of Dallas for the month of May here in the DFW. We show a lot of extraordinary individuals who are making things happen, who turn their dreams into reality, and that's what it's all about. So if they're excited to be back with you once again, back in the building tonight with the corn, the corn, what's going on with you, boy? Hey, I'm good. I'm just happy to be here amongst the greatness. <laughs> you know, I brought my <laughs> duffel bag to catch all the gems, man. <laughs> I, I know, right? And we know it's going to go out tonight because you know we have a great time here on the podcast every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday morning. And also, we have a great friend with us as well. She's you no know, stranger to the podcast, uh, Miss Woods. How are you doing, ma'am? It's good to see you. Good evening, everyone. I'm doing well. Awesome stuff, cool beans. And uh, we have a very special guest. Well, we have, matter of fact, we got a lot of, we got an a all star panel here with us tonight, man. So, this is yes, indeed. This, uh, it's going to be a very party situation as well. So, we're very excited. And of course, tonight's episode is called The Hall of Fame. That's the nice episode. And when I came with that, when I was doing the, the artwork upon, I was putting these pictures of the individuals on here tonight. It just gave me that Hall of Fame look. So that's why I came with the Hall of Fame. So tonight it's called the Hall of Fame. And we have a great, great group of people that's with us tonight. We got Shelby with us tonight. She's the, the recipient. She won the scholarship of a thousand dollars with uh Miss Woods. She'll talk more about that. Most again, congratulations to you, Shelby, on the hard work, the dedication, knowing that your work did not go in the vein, but it's paying off. I know it's gonna continue on paying off as you enter the next phase of your education and all that God got in store for you. Just keep up the great work. Thank you. And awesome. And also, uh, Miss Woods, go ahead and start it off. I know you, we had talked and I had you come on the show. I know you're doing a lot of great work around the city, not just in Dallas and Fort Worth, but also back home. So how did the scholarship come all about? Take us down this journey and to where it is today. Okay. Well, once again, Freeman, I want to thank you and Taquan for having me on the show. And I am the um, founder and CEO of New Focus Family and Youth Consultant. And I wanted to start the scholarship in memory of my grandfather and also my grandmother who's still living. Um, they have raised me and I just think that grandparents don't get enough props. And that's the type of scholarship I wanted um, to begin. Someone that is really being supported by their family and particularly grandparents. And Shelby, she applied and she fit that criteria. And, you know, and that's awesome. And I, and the willingness that she went in, put in for it and wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. Shelby, take us on that journey when you won the scholarship. What was in your mind that day when you found out that you was the winner? I feel very blessed. Um, my career path is quite an expensive one, unfortunately. I'm doing nursing and taking the additional pre-requirements so I can apply to med school. Hopefully be a surgeon one day, that's my goal. But it can be very pricey, so I'm very blessed on this scholarship. I'm gonna use it towards prep course materials for upcoming tests like the NCLEX and the MCAT. That's where the money will be going towards. So I feel very blessed and honored that you're supporting my education. It's very wonderful. <laughs> and that's what's up. And um, I know Miss Woods. I know you, you got a you got a great crew with you. So I'm gonna let Miss Woods go ahead and introduce the crew that's with us tonight. So go ahead and introduce these lovely people that's hanging out with us tonight here on Walking This Way in Bad Boys Podcast. Okay, well, I'm actually going to let them introduce themselves, but because Shelby is a um, a student at a boss high school, all of these individuals are alumni. So they, are, they graduated from there. Um, Sam Dupas, he has a logo in the back. They call it all about the A, and she just needed some backup tonight, so they're going to rep their school. They're going to just tell you about the great things that happen in our home area of a boss, and um, we'll let them introduce themselves and just say something about who they are and just supporting Shelby. So we'll start with um we'll start with Sam. Okay, thank you. Um thank you very much, Michelle. Um 
pleasure being here on the podcast just to celebrate Shelby and her accomplishment. Um, I'm glad to be part of the group that's going to help her start off on the right path to um, reach her goal. Um, as she, uh, she mentioned, I'm a, I'm a former graduate of, of all high, all about the A, got to represent, um, <laughs> even even in um, um, DFW. Um, got to stay close to my roots. Um, small area, but we make big impacts no matter, no matter where we go. Um, it's all about your foundation and those cornerstones, um, especially with those. I had two sets of grandparents um, that put a good foundation under me, prayed for me. I know that kept me going in the right direction, but still I reflect back on what they told me as a child to keep me focused and grounded on my career path as well. Hey, awesome, awesome. And who we have, we have, uh, was it Marty? Marty? Yes, sir, how you doing? Hey, Marty, how you doing, young king? How you doing everything going with you? All good, sir, just a typical Wednesday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, hey, give us a rundown about who you are as well, King. Well, my, my real name is Martin Jacobs, but I go by Marty as a nickname. But I'm a proud alumni, class of 2012. Um, I live, I'm currently living in Hammond. I'm currently a surgical assistant for the OMS, OMS Center of South Louisiana. I've been there for approximately two years. I've been a dental assistant for approximately five years, which I really enjoy. I love doing it. I love helping people. Uh, like uh, my cousin uh, Sam said that we all about the A. I'm if anything school-wise, uh, from pep rallies to football games, I was always there. I was my, in my senior year, I was a drum major. So I was very active in every sport activity, things like that. I was well known around the school and around of all pairs. Shelby, you might not know me, but if you ask some people, they might they might tell you who I am. Uh, but like I said, the foundation that we got when we was coming up as our grandparents put stone upon us, it was the best thing ever. If we ever needed something, like be picked up from school or bring to a doctor's appointment, anything like that. When I was coming up, I didn't go like daycares and all that kind of things. I stayed with my grand my grandma. She anything I needed, she was there. She lived approximately maybe five minutes down the street. So anything I needed, she was right there. So I so I know how you feel about um, your grandparents, a, a great role model. That's the best thing ever because not a me not that many people have that to look back on. Like our family, we great. We are honored to have my grandma and my grandpa who passed away. But I kind of remember him but i was kind of young at the time but i know if he was still been here and more active he'll help me through whatever but like i said congratulations shelby on everything i wish you the best of luck and just continue doing great things and that's what it's all about and i also got a queen with us as well is it keisha is that, is that, did i say that right i don't want to butcher nobody's name you got it exactly right most got it both times I actually got the pleasure of meeting you know, at Thursday. So I want to thank you, Shelly, because I'm not good at public speaking, and I kind of almost had a nervous breakdown. I'm down right in the medical profession. But um, I'm honored to be part of the fight uh, like to transfer for the bound uh, I know growing up, going to school, my parents work, my grandparents. My grandparents, they make sure I got it when I got home. So I know that that good foundation. Uh, but I'm, I'm honored to be part of this uh, battle. You see, Keisha, yeah, you're going in and out. I'm going in and out, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're going in and out. Yeah, just take your time. Yeah, you going. Yeah. Can y'all now? Yeah, you going. You still going in and out. You know, you still going in and out. You have earbuds in? No, I don't have any earbuds. Maybe my. Okay. Let me see if I can reconnect. I'll, I'll join back. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, like I said, uh, we're about to be ready to get this party started. Already started. Uh, Chef, you have a lot of great supporters here with you tonight. 
um just you doing it and it's like y'all are very y'all community is very very close and that's what's all before we get started i miss well let's take us to your hometown i don't know the work you're doing back at home i know you reside here in, in texas but the work you still doing back at home and just how all this just came about because i see that the love and support for each mm-hmm. other on um, the support system is very important so take us down your hometown and how everything is going okay well i'm originally from cottonport louisiana which is about 20 minutes 15 20 minutes away from where Vols high is located at but Vols parish is just a cluster of a lot of small towns very close knit everyone kind of know each other um families were close in the area that we grew up in it was just all about family and i've been able to take that with me wherever i've lived at you know i moved here to texas almost two years ago and I just bring that with me. And even though I'm living in Texas, my law to, to Louisiana is, is just tremendous. And I wanted to start there first with the scholarship, even though I'm here. So um, just really close knit and everybody helping each other. And I and I just see that. And I just see how they are here and they really support Shelby as well on her journey, her road to confer her education. I, mean, I know it is all the fame. Shelby, it's about you tonight. You see yes. in the background is about you. So Shelby, introduce yourself to the audience here on Walking This Way Impact Voice Podcast. My name is Shelby Johnston. When it comes to being an active member in my school and community, I can say I definitely fit that criteria. I was chair captain this year. I was on the team for five years, tennis co-captain, interact Christian Ignite, 4-H student council secretary for the past three years. Um, Community-wise, I've done a lot by Rotary and the Youth Coalition, and I do a lot of work with AHEC, for those who don't know, it stands for Area Health Education Center, and they've actually inspired my career path of wanting to be a surgeon. Because at first, when I'm looking at this, when I was little, looking at my small community, I didn't really see my potential within myself. So the people around me kind of helped inspire me to dream big, don't put limitations on myself. So throughout the AHEC programs, I've done different shadowings, like in a Vols hospital for a few weeks, and I fell in love in, with, fell in love with surgery there. Um, and I've done a few different programs with them, and one of them, Next Era, actually led me all the way to working with Stanford, now this time, Stanford Reach Lab Yab where I work on tobacco awareness and different curriculum to educate our community about the dangers of tobacco. It is a very much rising issue within our youth. So I'm glad to be a part of that work. Um, And I'm just honestly blessed to get the scholarship. Um, I won a couple other ones. I am the Mulder Scholar for LSUA, which is a full ride. Everything's covered for four years. So I would put the scholarship towards the prep work, which can get quite pricey, especially for them. MCAT can go up to like a few thousand dollars. It can be a very expensive process trying to get into med school with all the different test preps and stuff that I'll be doing. So I'm very blessed and fortunate. And it is a pleasure to be here today with all of y'all, truly. And you know what it is, Glass, you are a Hall of Famer, Shelby. But I say that because of your dedication, your hard work, your focus, your purpose driven to fulfill you, fulfill your life destiny, fulfill your purpose. You know, yeah, people say purpose, 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 but knowing what your purpose is and what you want to accomplish while you're here on earth, utilize that all that God gave you. Um, the Bible says that our gift should make room for the frame for a great man. And you want to utilize your gift, which will bring before a great man as well, to do the things you've been called to do. Do the things you're something to do. And before I got on tonight's show, I came across this um, video on Instagram. And um, Jay Hoop said, is, I got feedback. Okay. And then Jay Z said that the goal is not to be successful and famous, it's to live your life through your talent. Because we know that your talent, your guilt, impacts others. And I know with your guilt and talent, Chevy, it's going to impact others along the way and that's just how i listen to you talk shelby the investment within yourself within elementary well, pre, no pre-k elementary middle 
high school, now on to college. What keeps you going, Shelby, um, to reach higher heights? What is your motivation? What is your why at your young age? I've kind of always had a sense that I wanted to go into the medical field. So I've started at a young age, like freshman year, starting shadowing with AHEC. And I don't know, it's like, the more I do, and I just, I love to stay busy. I love to work. I love the hustle of reaching my goals and just steadily climbing, not only bettering myself in the process, but everyone around me, my community, my state, my nation. And it's just knowing that I can reach such a large audience and because it's it's not about me it's everybody else that i can talk to meet along the way impact them to choose healthier life choices or make better choices for themselves or like when i'm talking to um the younger kids at school and i tell them about all the programs i've done and i try and encourage them so hard to find their path they don't need to do what i do but find their own motivation and strive and reach whatever goals that they want it makes me so happy when i see what I've done impact other people. That's why I love healthcare so much. It's it's a calling, truly. Right, and it takes a special individual as yourself um, to do what you're doing. Of um, the coin you have, and then you want to ask the Hall of Famer. Um, sure. Well, first, congratulations on everything you're doing. Um, you know, it ain't easy out here to you know keep going. There's so many distractions, so you to keep going know exactly where you want to go big shout out to you for that um i did actually have a question um scholarships receiving scholarships how important is it for someone to plan that out because like you say things get expensive and i'm sure you just can't get the scholarship money and waste it because you know backfires on you but um yeah how important is that it's definitely important to start planning ahead. Um, I started like during the summer of junior year summer, start writing like my resume and trying to get everything together. Cause senior year can be really hectic. I don't think people realize the extent until you're in it. One thing after another, whether senior events or it's your first last day of this or that, and it could get very hectic. So having a good schedule, just sitting down one day with yourself and be like okay i'm gonna write my resume this day or like have like a checklist that's what i do i live by my planner because things could get so so crazy it's very important to apply for scholarships because everything is just so expensive even like some of the smaller schools looking at the tuition prices scared me if i'm honest it really did so that's why i'm so blessed that i took the time applied for all of them made a good plan and fortunately won some i'm very blessed for that because it can get so so expensive yeah and, and also um shelby just those who maybe listen how can they start applying for scholarships because we know we got we got you know what we got to put an end to these student loans and these student loans is, is a trap but we know there is money out there that people don't even know about um, I know Miss Woods, you mentioned that before, uh, but how can people start getting these scholarships? Where can they start looking for these scholarships at? So let's put an end um, to these student loans. Let's get out of these debts and just take the free money that's already out there. When I first started looking at it, I looked at like college specific ones. So I kind of narrowed down my choices to which colleges I were considering at the time because deadlines could be our worst enemies senior year like for major colleges their deadline for the big application like the big scholarships are a lot sooner in the year so i would start looking at that first and then locally there's a lot of local scholarships like a lot of local businesses or a lot of people want to support their community so i looked at those second and that's kind of how i planned it out okay that's what's up and also we have we have another guest with us too gotta give a shot miss Son sonia is sonia you, uh, go ahead and mute your mic, uh, mute yourself. Hi, yes, Sonia Tesoris. Hi, everybody. I apologize for my, my tardiness. Um, the enemy was trying to keep me from not showing up, but God said, mm -mm, you gonna make it because you gotta represent <laughs> Moorville, Falls High, 
classified. And she has on the colors. I, I love, love it. <laughs> so congratulations to you and thanks guys for having me. Yeah, most definitely. And matter of fact, while you're here, go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience that's watching us right now here on Walking This Way and Fat Boys Podcast. Okay. Well, my name is Sonia Tesaurus Antoine. In my social media world, I'm known as Sonia Tesaurus. I am a licensed professional counselor, nationally certified. I'm also a certified life coach in the Lafayette, Louisiana area and i am originally from moralville louisiana which is where evolves high school is um homegrown grew up with all of these individuals will excel shelby and and lil martin but i know lil martin very well um mm -hmm. as well we're all family our families are is family we grew up together and we're we're family Man, that's what's up right there. Like I said, I see all the support here for Shelby tonight. Everybody took time out the productive schedule to really support her and what she's doing. And just the drive, the, no, just the motivation of um, Shelby that you got going on, the determination of will. And I applaud you for that, especially at your age and knowing what you want. We have a lot of young people in our generation who is being tossed to and fro, um, don't know where to go, don't know where to turn don't have the guidance to reach their destination, um, just going along with the in crowd. But as you as a young woman stand out and doing what you're doing, and I know you mentioned, I already asked you about that, but what do you see for yourself in the near future? I know you want to you know, you know, do what you do, but in other words, you want to be the best at what you do. You want to master this thing. I'll do it. And so What's, what's, so you got the Sky Show. So what's the next thing going to be for Shelby? I know you got work to do. I know you'll be rooting and grounded. So what's going to be the next thing for Shelby? It's been for the summertime coming up. So I know you're really going to be hustling and bustling. So just let us know. Well, I actually do have a plan. I'm very glad that you asked. Um, I'm working right now with AHEC to try and line up some summer shadowing, hopefully with Dr. Bornewall. We shall see. I would love to get back into the operating room. But if not, I, I'll i see who else there is available to shadow over the summer. So that's the main thing. I am sitting as a panelist for the American Heart Association, a little online conference that we're doing. And then it's a lot of planning for the upcoming school year, like which clubs I want to join at LSUA. I've been in the biology club, so I'll definitely stay in that. I was thinking maybe media team since I love avocation and I love to get a little more tech savvy and learn how to do like podcasts myself. Um, I'm not the best at technology. So definitely media and just kind of seeing where I'm going to be. I'm trying to start a road rat club at LHA. That is my current project. I'm trying to set that up because Rotary's motto is service above self. I truly believe that. And I had a pleasure working with Interact and being a debutante for Vols Rotary. So I would love to bring that at LHUA. So that's kind of <laughs> where I'm at right now. Okay, then that's what's up. Uh, the coin, you have anything you want to ask? Um, yeah, I actually had a question for uh, Marty. Yes, sir. Yeah, how you doing? Good, um, you, sir. I'm good, I'm good. I wanted to know, like, you you mentioned being at uh, all the events, you know, making yourself available for the youth. How important is that? Because I know a lot of kids, you know, they may not have somebody backing them up or somebody that comes sees them, let alone somebody that's not in their family. So how right. important is that for a child to have somebody show up for them at their moments? I mean, that's the best thing ever to have somebody in your corner whenever you need them. Like it could be family, friends, or whoever. As long as you have somebody there supporting you through anything, that knows they have your back, and no matter what, then that's the best thing ever. They don't have to be there for you financially or anything like that. As long as they're willing to listen to you and then give you some advice that they might went through that you might not might not know about, just a, a listening ear, somebody that can help you and see you through. That's the best thing ever, and support you whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's what's up. I know that support system is strong and giving someone to be able to give them a green light to be able to pursue their goals, um, turn their dreams into reality. And that's what people need to hear. 
they don't need to hear oh that's too much or you'll be realistic but to really get words of, of wisdom the words of the wise and say you know you say that all the time growing up you can do anything you put your mind to it and you really can and i know I mentioned earlier not to limit yourself but we all different we are god made us all different unique in our own special way so it's the investment and never limit yourself so the sports system is very strong and it's much needed never downplay nobody especially with children never turn away from their dream and they they want to be something inspired to be something help them become it and let hey you can do this you got this even though the journey may seem like it's so which is a mindset but you can do it break the algorithm so you have to keep which full so i agree with you marty on that um this was i'm gonna ask you this seeing the fruits of your labor um you giving back to the next generation how is that for you right now just seeing shelby and i know as many others to benefit from this so what goes to your mind just giving back to the community seeing your food seeing the fruits of your labor well the first thing that goes through my mind is that i'm i'm blessed you know and again it comes from my upbringing everyone that's on here that's from a balls they know that again we just we believe in helping people you know when you come from a small town and everyone kind of knows each other you take that with you anywhere you go so being able to invest in a student like shelby you know i believe in youth empowerment future world changers she she exemplifies that you know you're hearing her she has a very strategic plan on what she wants to do and the main thing she wants to come back and work hopefully in a vault she wants to come back and give to the community so i'm just paying it forward to shelby and i know that she's going to do the same for someone in the future as well as everyone that's on this panel yeah, that's it. And just listen to her talk, Shelby. You ve- it's a, you're very mature for your age, and that's a good thing. The way you talk, the way you carry yourself, that is a blessing. Um, just knowing you won't stay in focus, stay in rooted and grounded. And I know you mentioned that you're blessed. You are blessed. And I know that this is a very exciting time for you. And just really, you got people that really support you and pushing you and challenge you to become a great woman. And I know you're in the, in the, in the process, it's you practice, have a problem. So that's the most important thing. So I'm going to ask you this, Jeff, besides studying, what do, when it's that down time and leisure time, what are the things you like to do um, when you're not studying? Definitely sleep. I love my reading sleep, so that's probably my favorite hobby, I guess. Um, TikTok. I, I have to admit, I'm I'm young. I'm addicted to TikTok, just like everybody else. I can scroll on it for quite some time. And I like to spend some time outside. I have like a little herb garden. And just recently, my little ducky passed. He used to just run around the yard. I miss him. So that's what we used to do. I would tend to my little herb garden. I have my little ducky follow me. We trained him so we could pick him up. And uh, I miss my ducky. But yeah, spend a little time outside and spend a lot of time resting and recovering because the days do get long sometimes. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, uh, how do you start your? I know with all the work that you're doing, how what time do you start your day and what time do you go to bed? I know you are studying, researching. How do you plan your day? How do you go about planning your day? Cause you're all a famous. So how do you go about planning your day? <laughs> I wake up at five in the morning, um, Monday through Friday. I uh, Tuesday, Thursday classes are really long at LSU because I had three back to back. So by the time I would drive, well, get dressed and then drive over there, I would have class from nine thirty all the way till two o'clock. And like Monday, Wednesday, Friday wasn't bad because I was only have like my little history class. So like depending on the day of the week and if I had practice for sports. Everything was like iffy, just take it day by day. But normally I would wake up at five and go to bed like 11-ish. That's about the time. Everything's just like situational with all the practices and all the extra work I do. Might have been able to get a little nap in between somewhere. <laughs> it it all just depends. Well, like I said, it all just depends. But I, I, I respect you because of your work. I respect you for your drive. You know, you put aside a temporary fund for long-term success. 
and we talk about this all the time on the podcast, that people want the success, but they want to be comfortable at the same time. But in order for you to be great, you have to give up something. And we talk about this all the time on the show. And by you working, you know, you know you're young, you know, you got a lot of people, but well, I'm going to hang out with my friends on the weekend and go to the movies and bowl, whatever. But you're determined to make some out your life because you know that, yeah, I'm doing this, but I know it's going to invest myself long term. Um, and I know you probably inspire a lot of people in your circle just by your work ethic. You know, it's really unheard of. I, it really is. I'm really just blown by it, really, for real. So, come on, you have anything you want to ask? Oh, no, I'm, I'm good for now. I don't know if anybody else want to say anything. Oh, yeah, we got some people that want to talk. Um, go anybody want to ask Chef anything? Like, feel free. One thing I'm really impressed by Shelby is how she mentioned that she's already reaching back out to um, younger people in her area to show them there are other opportunities out there besides what you've just seen on your day-to-day in a small area. The world's a lot bigger. All you need is that opportunity to grow. Um, get yourself out the little small pot in the big area to spread your roots um, and learn your talent, improve your talent. Um, one thing I always notice, um, especially like the work um, Michelle is doing, just showing people that there are other things. A lot of us go to work, the real successful people go to work, come home, when they get a chance to sleep, they sleep. And all the young kids see are the people that aren't really doing anything, so they see the foolishness more than the hard work. Um, so when people reach out to the, those younger youth to, hey, there are other things that we're just seeing on your day-to-day basis. Um, so just apply yourself, keep pushing, don't lose focus. No matter what these negative people around you are saying, just um, find somebody that you, that's at the goal stage that you want to get to um, and ask them how they got there. And they're going to give you, hey, they're going to give us, like we all had that first step is the hard step. But you got just got to keep going, keep pushing, and you're going to get there eventually. Yeah, I agree with you saying 1,000% on what you said. Uh, because we know distractions do come, but block out those distractions. Um, block out the negativity. Block out people that murmur and complain too much, too. That's another thing. Um, block out all that out and stay focused. When that comes, stuff comes up, it's just no way. That's just a distraction. I have to maintain focus and really stay focused. And I know I mentioned earlier, not limit yourself, because some people do limit themselves at a certain at a certain stage. They feel like, well, I'm not good enough because where I came from. I may not be good enough because of my educational background. But all through the Bible, look at the Bible. Some of the people that God used made excuses, but God said utilize them. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah, said, I'm only a child. But God didn't see that. God see past that. You know, Moses was a stutter. You know, he sent Aaron alone. So it's like when it comes to God, you can't make excuses because he's going to utilize you. He where he sees fit. So there is no excuses for great things in life. So I just wanted to uh, piggyback on that. With what you were saying. What else we got? Um Miss Sonia, you have anything you want to ask and you want to put in? I just want to tell Shelby, remember your why. Remember why it is that you want to do these things because there will be some naysayers along the way. People that are going to try to come against you and try to discourage you, like they always just said, the distractions. But learn how to mute that out early. Okay, because you're you're young and still somewhat impressionable, but I think you have a strength that some other you don't have. Um, and because you have that, I think you're going to go really, really far in life. But just remember your why and block out any and all distractions. And on the days where it seems like it's going to be really tough, Remind yourself of who you are, whose you are, and that you're passionate and purpose for these things that you set out to do for yourself and that's before you and keep pushing and keep striving. I wish you the best. And that's it. And you know, and I just 
at your age, uh, Shelby, the mindset you have, that's a blessing. So we have a lot of people in our generation, they feel like just because they're in their night young, in their 20s, they feel like they got their whole life ahead and they got they feel they got time. We never have time. We have time, but we got to utilize that time, you know? And you never want to make nobody feel like it don't take all that. Yes, it do it take all that. Because people realize, because when you realize when you get past 20, you're going to have 30, you have 40, then you realize, oh, shoot, I wasted my time in my 20s. And, that, and that's a trick at the end. And they feel like just because you're in your teens, your 20s, that's your time to party and whatever. No, that's a trick of the enemy. But you set yourself on the right path. Okay, Shelby, that's a blessing that your story can inspire not just young people, but people that's much older as well. We got some old people who are trying to find their way too. But you just showed me, Shelby, that there's no excuse. No matter what stage you're at in your life, there is no excuse. Because it's really about how bad you really want it. You know, and I, and I have to remind myself all the time, and I say this before, nobody's not going to knock on your front door and tell you you got to get your life together. It's not going to happen. You have to get up and make things happen. It's not going to fall out the sky. You have to get up and make things happen. You're like what you did. You didn't sit back, Shelby, and wish upon a star. You you made you create opportunities, and that's how you met with, with Miss Woods and many others because you made opportunity and you made it happen. And it's like okay, I keep behind this young woman because she's sitting back. She's not sitting back, but she's making opportunities, and I just applaud you for that. So keep up the great work in what you do. But I know you are a winner, and I know you're a high achiever. Keep doing what you're doing. Shelby, have anything you want to ask? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like for everybody, because um, we all counselors in, in some way uh, or another. How important is, is is it to make yourself available that you are a counselor? Because you know a lot of people are probably walking by counselors every day, but there's no way you know for them to know, and we can't really tell their struggles. But um, you know, is, is there like a promotion or a way uh, that you kind of ever let them know, hey, do you need any help or anything like that? So sometimes I feel like I have. It tattooed here because I'll go to the grocery store, I'll go through the drive-through, and I counsel somebody. Um, prime example: the other day I was in the nearest dollar store, just picking up some random things, you know. And I overhear the the two um, clerical people, um, cashiers. I'm sorry, talking. And I'm minding my own business, but then there's always that part of me that's like, well, go ahead on and, you know, let them know you can help them because she's burnt out. She's saying if she don't do something, she's going to lose it or she's going to have to quit her job and this and that and another. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to get in y'all's business. I said, but it sounds like you need to implement some effective self-care. And she kind of stopped and looked at me and I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a counselor. Here's my card. If you need any assistance, let me know. Um, and so I try to make myself available. I mean, I'm on social media, um, you know, referrals, word of mouth. But I also try to do things out in the community to let people know, hey, I'm here. Um, I try to participate in pop up shops where they're trying to promote more community resources and things of that nature, just so that people know that I'm here, you know, because a lot of times, especially in our community, there's that stigma that exists around mental health, um, talking about your problems, etc. And I'm so far removed from that, not just because I'm a counselor, but coming from um, our small town you know i didn't have many people that i could go to and talk to and so one of my ways of giving back is making sure i'm present for others who may need you know so i do things like group therapy um, for young girls i also do youth mental health summits and allow them to come in and get free mental health um so just trying to do those things make myself present um and yeah, I hope that 
answered your question. Yes, and I'll forget you still got uh, Keisha back as well. Um, Keisha, go ahead and reintroduce yourself. Hi, I'm Keisha Hill, class of 2002. It's, I jumped in back at the right part, part, so it sounds like I missed a lot of good things, unfortunately. But um, again, Shelby, I just wanted to congratulate you on your your scholarship and everything you do in the future. I know it will be great. So. And that's uh, and uh, I know the coin you said something about the counseling and giving back. How how important it is to give back. You know, the Bible says a blessing to give and receive. And I know you mentioned about giving back. So how important it is to give back. That people don't realize that it's important to give back. That it's not about me, but it's all about giving back to others. So how is important it is to give back that the list of RD to know that it's important to give back to others. And just watch how God will bless you when you give to others. Well, Furman, I want to answer that. Um, the thousand dollars that was given to Shelby, like I say, I paid it forward. I graduated two years ago with my specialist degree, and someone gifted me that one thousand dollars because of the work they saw me doing back in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I knew then I wasn't sure about starting a scholarship, but I knew I wanted to invest that back into the youth. So giving back is very important, not just monetarily, but like you said, everyone that's here tonight supporting her. They're giving their time. She's getting these gems, these nuggets, as the Quan says, and she's able to take that with her because the same halls that she's walking at a ball's high, everyone on this panel has walked those halls. And that's why I wanted to assemble, as you said, this Hall of Fame team to let her know there's so many great things that have come out of a ball's high, and she's just another one of those components. And you know what, and that's a blessing um, as well. And I see the work that you're doing. You mentioned, you said something. Someone seen the work that she was doing. Mm -hmm. The investment. People always watch it. They they're not going to invest in anything. They're not going to, if you're not doing anything, they're not going to invest. But they see you hustling, bustling, and it got your head down working. That's where they came from. And I like that. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you this one too, my good friend. How can people how can people apply for the scholarships? Where can they go? How can they? Because this is all about our young generation. And, I, and we talked about this on the show last night. We get tired of seeing our young people go to jail. I work within the system. We got a lot of young kids being incarcerated. This is not just in Texas. It's all through the state. You see this. A lot of young men and women looking at life in prison. We gotta stop it. We gotta prevent that because we're losing a generation. But the one that's here, she really grab hold to them. But just get back to that. How can they apply for the scholarship, Miss um, Woods, for those who are interested? Okay. Well, this was the first year, and I started off with the Balls High School. Um, like I said, the panel that's here, everyone is pretty much family. So I knew that I could get a good group of people to work with me and to support whoever the recipient was. Next year, um, God willing, the scholarship will go to a high school graduating senior from Evolve's public charter high school. So there's five high schools in our parish. And my goal and my business plan is to give a scholarship to one, one recipient each year for the next five years. And then after that, I want to have a big banquet. And Shelby, hopefully you'll be able to come back and speak as the first and represent but the scholarship is really important to do because like I said, it's in honor of my grandparents. Shelby wrote a great essay, maybe she can delve into that about her grandparents' support. And I just think that, again, we have to go back to that village, to that community. As um, Marty said, we had our grandparents and other people there picking us up from you know, practices and things. We didn't have to worry about how we were gonna make it. If our parents weren't there, we had other people and just from what I see and what we often see, young people don't have that village anymore. You know, um, they don't have people supporting and guiding them. And when you have someone like a Shelby that has worked so hard, a thousand dollar scholarship is a drop in the bucket to invest into what she's gonna do. So next year we will do another scholarship and it will be going to um, a recipient from Evolve's Public Charter High School. I still want to do some things with Evolve's High because they have some amazing things going on. Um, their alum can speak to it. 
the sports teams have done great. It's just an amazing school. I didn't attend there, but I follow them and I follow people that go there and they just have a lot of great things. Um, shout out to the AD there, Corey Bannister, he's a great friend of all of ours. Um, he's doing some great things with all the sports team and taking these young men and women and making them into great student athletes for students first. And it's just all about the A and it's all about a Vols Parish, um, a Vols Parish proud. And tonight my heart is just full of joy because this is what, it's more than what I could have envisioned for Shelby and for the support she's receiving. And everyone on here just put in our small area on the map, but we definitely are a Vols Parish proud. Man, that's, and that's what's up. And I like uh, Shelby's mindset that she wanna utilize these scholarships so she don't wanna be in no debt. So I applaud for that. You want to go to this day, no yeah. student loans, no nothing. When you graduate, you know, I don't owe nobody, I don't know all these universities, nothing, because I had the money with well, this guy should be help further my education. So I applaud you for that. So I know, um, we, oh, I know you mentioned you. on the show, we were talking about the scholarship and you was talking about how, how it's so much free money out there mm -hmm. that people do not know that. Elaborate again for those who hear this for the very first time that there is money for them to use. They just have to tap into it. So break it down one more time for those who are listening for the very first time. Right. <clears throat> well, you know, I always use this main point. Every year that's over $1 billion that goes unrewarded in scholarships. So even with the scholarship money that's given out, $1 billion, and this is according to Forbes magazine, you know, a really reputable magazine that deals in finances, people don't apply. So the money is left on the table from universities, from private organizations. They want to give the money away because number one, they want it as a tax write-off, but number two, they want to invest into the next generation and people aren't applying. So when this money is left there, and people are going to school and they're getting in debt or they can't finish school because they don't have the funds, a lot of them, particularly in black and brown communities, they go back into an impoverished life that can lead to a lot of different things that we see contributing to the social ills of the world. So it's not about going to a four-year university or even a two-year university. Cosmetology school now costs anywhere between fifteen to $20,000. There are scholarships with so many different opportunities for once you graduate. But you have to take the time out and look for it and apply. You know, the time that young people spend scrolling on TikTok and social media, Shelby can tell you. She wrote the essay, she uploaded what needed to be uploaded, every requirement. And it wasn't a hard scholarship to fill out, but I did have requirements. And she met every last one of those. So it does take time, but that time is definitely worth it to not have any student loan debt and to have the opportunity to do what she's doing to pursue her dreams. And I wanna add another caveat to that and I want Sam to speak on it. In addition to scholarship, you can also go into the military or do some type of um, GI Bill situation. And he is a veteran, so thank you for your service, Sam. And just have him expound on that because I know he has some experience in that area. Yeah, several people missed that opportunity because that's almost, free college all together. You get the tuition exemption if you're a state resident in Louisiana. You get the GI Bill on top of that. And then every month when you for the National Guard when you do your duties, you can get payment from that. Um, that was a blessing on my part. Um, when I signed up for it um, and joined, I was able to take the skills I had and then improve upon them. Came, um, I succeeded in on the enlisted side and also on the commission officer side. Um, taught me how to manage a large group of people. Um, helped me network. Um, became a better public speaker. Um, just showed me a, a big how big the world is and how different societies move. Um, so that set me up for what I'm currently doing now. I do manage a large group of people um, for AT and T, and you know how to move around and relate to different people. You understand where they come from. It also gives me the opportunity um, to reach out in different communities to assist people like Shelby. Um, I try to, like like my cousin stated, try to be visual so they can see, oh, so-and-so came from this small town. Now look what he's doing, these big things. It's possible for anybody. Um, growing up in a small community, you don't think 
you don't know what you don't know, basically. Um, if you're not exposed to it, so you got to put yourself out there, have a plan, and don't be scared. And like Sonia mentioned, just put those naysayers in the back. They're going to be negative regardless because they envy what you're doing. Um, but just show them that it can be done, and it actually may change them, change their opinion, and motivate them to become a better person also. Yeah, most definitely. And I know you mentioned like the military, and we know the military help frame structure for those who need structure um, to help maintain structure. We know it is important to have structure in our everyday life. Uh, just be on that right path to uh, keep going, keep striving every day. And like we said, and I, I don't want to glorify the stretches because that's just a trick, but to really knock these things over. Even though they may try to move the goalposts, Shelby, you always gonna you just gonna bust right through that wall. And I just like a mindset of not to be dead. Who want to be in debt? You know, it, and that's not good. But you want to better go, better lay your head down at night, not knowing I got the student loan on my head. But when you graduate, and I said I said that when you graduate, you look back and say, you know what? I don't know nobody anything. I, that's that's what I like to say. And I, 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 I watch my word. I don't say try. I don't say might because when I say try to me, it's like it may not happen. I, that's why I said when you graduate because I know it's going to happen. So that's why I say when you graduate because it's already manifested itself. But that's why I like to say that. So that is when it's going to do it. So that's why I want to say on that one. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to share? here on the podcast i have a question i would just like for the um of all high alum to share some of their best memories i know marty talked about some of his memories but some of the memories in case there's anyone that's watching that's as of all high now they can kind of see what it was like because things change so what what is your favorite memory from of all high mm. has so <laughs> many great memories well, um, for me, since I was in the band, I, like I said, pep rallies, football games, basketball games, love them. Things change. Like now, I'm pretty sure half the teachers that taught me at of all time is not, no longer there. I wish them all the best of luck. But I know a lot of changes have made because I went to the, the game, the um, playoff game, and I was surprised like how much things have changed. They have a track field now. And I was like, all the portables, that's all gone, that's got rid of. They got new buildings now, new cafeterias, like everything has changed. I was like, wow, I graduated 12 years ago and all this changed in 12 years. I was surprised. But of all time, was a great school, but now I love the upgrades that they have made. And I see now that it needs that because of all time, it, need, it needed that change. It was an older school at the beginning, but now since it's coming up in age now, it needs to, it, it's gotten better. So I'm great, very grateful for like the school board office and everyone who had their hands in making the school more better for the future students and the current students there. It just makes me so happy now that I see like, wow, my school is found, it's looking like a real school now. And it, just, <laughs> it makes me so happy. Right. It looked like real school, and like you said, it looked like real school. It was it on a form or something? It was in the board <laughs> house? Just yeah. it wasn't. It was not. It, it was a great school. I was, I'm gonna say it was a great school. Carmen, it was next to a field. Well, I'm from Alabama, so you get Mobile. I'm from Mobile, Alabama, originally. So if people hear that, you went on the like I'm you might dirt they ain't got no dirt roads, but you know, it's like a little small city. But anyway, but yeah, <laughs> carry so, on. So if the cafeteria <laughs> ran out of corn, they just can walk across the field. <laughs> well <laughs> but yeah, man, well <laughs> go ahead. So like go ahead. For me, the um two things. One when I got to Evolves High my uh, freshman year, my grandmother, who raised me, um, was one of the cooks. And so when, when she was the headline cook, everybody wanted to be my friend because <laughs> they knew 
we could go back through and get extras and she was gonna yes. really hook us up <laughs> look Sam, samuel said yes because look she cooked um and i and i think another thing is um the friendships that we were able to build back then um because most of us came up from a uh, head start um you know and even though there were some changes in in the school structures along the years we still managed to come back together and there was so much love and it wasn't all of the the drama and the things that you see going on amongst the you these days you know everybody truly looked out for one another and it was again almost like family so those are the two things that uh, are most memorable for me and that's what's up. I also want to give a big shout out to everybody that's watching us as well. We're live streaming right now on YouTube, Twitter, and on um, Facebook Live, of course. So we are live streaming right now. Big shout out to everybody who is watching us, of course. Big shout out to everyone who's doing great work. Uh, also, go to our website. We have a website up now. So you go to www.walkingthisway.impactboys.com. You can donate, you can watch past episodes, you can shop online with us as well. So we got that going. So I just want to give a big shout out to everybody who is tuning in and maybe tuning in. Well, tuning in the new future also, because we will be up on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all social media platforms. We got to give a shout out to everybody who are listening to us right now and go on live. And also, so can I give a big shout out to everybody? Can not about those who have been down with us for day one? So big shout out to everybody. So I had to go plug that in. So, you know, uh, Shelby, so what's next? I know when do when do school when do y'all when do school start stop? When do when do school when is when do, when is it? Because I, I don't have any kids, I don't know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> when when um do y'all start shot summer vacation? Well, it's a little different for me because I do dual enrollment, so I don't have any classes at Wolves per se, because I'm a full-time dual enrollment student at LSUA. So today was actually my last final. I took it a little bit before I hopped on the podcast because it was just proctored online at home. So technically I'm done with school right now, but I still have different activities and all that to plan. Graduation is May 23rd. I am counting down the days. I'm very excited for the next step in my journey. Man, congratulations on that. She did a final exam before she came onto the night show. That dedication. That, that, that's <laughs> some dedication right there. I applaud you for that. You know, you, you, you go hard. You know what I'm saying? I, I give you a rose. I really do. Because you're doing a great, great work. And I hope whoever well, listen to this, they, they step their game on. They listen to this like, if Shelby can do it, I know I can do it too. Because you, you light in a fire been a lot of people tonight just by your work and your drive. So that's what's up right there. Um, another thing, what else? Uh, uh, Keisha, there you go. I know you are class of what, 2002, correct? Did you mention that earlier? Class 2002, yes, sir. 21 years ago. I mean, I came out in 2001, so. You bitch out to us 40 year olds, you know what I'm saying? So. I, I, I'm uh, Talk about your school experience. <laughs> Um, I ain't shaking my age. I, I just turned 41 um, on April 23rd. I'm not shaking my age. I'm still a good fight. Still a young man. But go ahead and talk about your experience um, when you was going to school. The funs and the party, what the, what, the dances, the proms, just the friendships, the teachers. Because we had real teachers back then. These new age teachers. I don't know on the new age teachers. <laughs> okay, now, Furman, watch it. <laughs> Up back I ain't said all of them, but I'm saying some of you do age teachers. <laughs> right. Those, those were the good ones back in the early, the late 90s, early 2000s. You actually interacted with your classmates. You just didn't talk via chat, via phones. Like, they now I have teen, I have teenagers, so that's all they do. They talk to their friends all day. But growing up, I enjoyed growing up and involved. School, looking forward to finding out who was going to be in your class that first day. Um, I was very active. I was in the band. I was in student council. I was in beta. I was kind of a geek <laughs> back then. I, I wasn't the one to, to party a lot. I was at school. So um, 
but I, I enjoyed my time. Um, it prepared me for my next step. Once I, you know, graduated, I ended up going to LSU and continuing my education there. But um, high school, it, it it was something to remember back then. You enjoyed it. You had to community. You had nothing to worry about. You can go parties and go to um, events and not worry about the things that go on to them, unfortunately. Um, the good thing about it boils, we didn't have those issues growing up. And even now, I think it's still a, a good small community. They have their things, but it's not as bad as some of the things you see in these bigger cities. Um, but um, 2002 was like the best year coming out of the balls. I just have to put that out there. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, it, but you know, yeah, back then, no time was fun. It was back then, no time was fun. Uh, you, you, we see, we see the difference going on then and now. You know, you see social media. Uh, back, we didn't really have, we had no cell phones. It was no such thing. We used to write letters and and go talk to people. Now everything is social media. Uh, the stuff they do in ninety schools. It was no such thing. Find no teacher. We didn't. You, that's something you never did. But now you see some students get into physical altercates with teachers now uh, a lot has changed um but i gotta give the shots to the teachers too because our teachers are holding it down y'all deserve to get paid way more and then what they give because you wear different hats because we come now where these kids are come from broken homes come from broken families teachers have to play these different roles of being a parent a big brother big sister counselor how do y'all, how do we, as a teacher, handle all that? Because that's a lot. But I applaud the teachers for this because it's a really, it's really tough now compared to back then because you went in different hats. Yeah. Well, I want to say this, um, and it kind of ties into what's going on here tonight. There's a lot of negative things going on in education. Of course, we see it all on social media. But spotlighting a student like Shelby, and I'm sure she can say how her teachers as well as family members have been a big part of her success. This is what we need to see more of. We need young people like her to be ambassadors, to be able to let other young children know whether you come from a small area like a Vols or a big city, that there are adults there to support you and to help you fulfill your dream, but you have to want it. And that's really what I think we need to focus on in education, getting the community back involved, not pointing fingers, blaming who's not doing what, but just people coming together, realizing that these young people need us. And whether it's your child or children or your grandchild or a family member, we all need to play our part in some way to be able to help young people such as Shelby and just everyone be all they can be because they're not only the future, they're the present and they need us. Yeah, they do. They really do. And I love that, uh, how you put that together. Cause it really needs to be done to really showcase Shelby. And by what you're doing, Shelby, it's an amazing thing that it will inspire other people, motivate other people, and just have fun, enjoy your life, and just keep doing what you're doing in the process. So do anybody else have anything they want to share here on the podcast? Anybody else? Just to throw it out there, um, a vault sign itself symbolizes um, the people that grew up in that area. Just like Marty mentioned, myself, I graduated back in 95, which contrary to Keisha's statement is the best year of vault sign. <laughs> um, as Sonia was around that time, we had a lot of portable buildings um, at the school because it, it was an old school, um, no track field, but somehow, some way, um, we succeeded. Um, in the classroom, um, we were performing as a grade A school. Um, our track team still went to state. Um, no matter what was put in front of what obstacle, we found a way around it. Um, our band, everybody loved the band. Uh, we had a huge band class. Even though we may have had old instruments, we still sounded great. We looked it great. We made the best of best of, out of what we had and succeeded. And that goes that relate that shows in the people as well mm. yeah that's what's up right there i know about to get off the air 
um, shortly. Uh, Shelby, you know, that you are a Hall of Famer. Do you have any final remarks you want to leave with the listening audience that's going to resonate with them, like the Cohen said, gems, the Jews, and stuff? So, do you have any gems and Jews you want to drop right now for the listening audience? I would say, um, definitely treat school like a full-time job if your schedule allows it that's kind of how i've always thought of my schooling i take it very seriously some people think i'm being a little dramatic when it comes to grades but my gpa is what's getting me my fluoride scholarship and allowing me to keep it so treat school like a full-time job don't let any negative comments or haters bother you because uh, jealousy is just a reflection of themselves. They're clearly jealous of you because they see something in you that they want. So focus on yourself, keep your goals right there in front of you and reflect on your good days when it gets really rough. My good days are like my shadowing experience or my different advisory boards that I'm a part of. I always think about how happy I am when I'm doing work with them when it could be a little bit hectic. So just be very goal oriented and keep pushing to strive for success, whatever that may be. Um, even if it could be a lot sometimes, um, just think of it, try and improve yourself a little bit every day. Even if you don't have a specific goal in mind, just try and better yourself, make that the goal. If you don't have like a specific set goal, like minus the middle field, but for some who don't, just try and be a better person a little bit more every single day. Yeah, that's what's up right there. Uh, Marty, you have any final remarks you want to leave with the listening audience? Well, Shelby, congratulations on everything. Sorry I couldn't make it to the award ceremony due to work, but I was very proud of you and your accomplishments and my cousin for introducing you to New Focus. Uh, like I said earlier, I just want to wish you the best of luck with everything. When times get hard, just breathe, think about it. You need a, a ear, somebody's there to listen to you. So don't feel like nobody's there for you. Somebody's always there. They might not show it, but somebody's there. Cause a living fact, these people right here and all my family, if it wouldn't be for none of them, I wouldn't know what I'd be what I'd be today. So take that in mind. Just concentrate on your schooling. You can have some fun. You don't wanna work yourself too much. Have a little bit of fun, cause I have my fun, especially. But Take your time out, concentrate your schooling, graduate, and then get ready for the real world. That's what's up, Sam. Go ahead, you got any final remarks? Yeah, we're over here fighting with the mute button. Um, this, as Marty said, congratulations, Shelby. It's your work ethic is going to bring you very far in life. Um, this, just, um, just hearing you speak on you know, what you're do, doing and what you plan to do uh, makes me proud. Um, I'm glad you folks was able to to help you out on your path. Uh, just stay focused. That's the that's the key. Um, and don't forget where you come from and who you are. That's gonna, your foundation is going to make it so much easier in life for you. Um, remember those gems, those nuggets as you go along in life. Every time you get one from somebody, just put it in your pocket and save it for later. At some point, you're going to use it. Um, if you ever need anything, just reach out. Uh, I love to talk and I love to help young people out and guide them, even older people. Just I, I love seeing other people get be successful so I know they'll pay it forward to somebody else as they go on. So good luck. This is up. Go ahead, Ms. Wood, my friend, go ahead. Okay. Well, once again, Shelby, I want to say congratulations. Thank you for applying. Thank you for being such an awesome ambassador for scholarships and also to represent the Wood Support Grandparent Legacy um, as the first. That You never get to be another first, so that's why it's so important. And I also want to thank everybody on the panel tonight again. Um, this has been an amazing, amazing experience having you on here supporting Shelby, talking about your school, representing the A. And then I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Furman Jackson Jr. and his whole crew, the Quan, Ursula, Shanae, on your nomination for having one of the best podcasts in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 
So everyone on the panel, you're not just on any podcast. You're on a podcast that is up for a major award and he's been doing great work. And as y'all can see, he's laid back, but he's very into what he's doing. And um, I just want to thank you for what you've done for New Focus and what you're continuing to do for business owners here in the Dallas Fort Worth area and worldwide. Because he is worldwide. You know, you've had guests from England and all these different places. So much love and thank you so much. You know, my friend, I love you too. Keep doing what you're doing because I'm watching you. You constantly here and there. And you truly making an impact. And I truly appreciate you as well. Also, so keep up the great work. Uh, Miss Sonia, do you have any final remarks you want to leave to the listening audience? A big shout out to the Hall of Fame herself. Shelby, keep up the great work. Go ahead, Miss Sonia. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for having um, all of us. Um, Michelle, thank you for what you're doing and for having us um, and having me, Shelby, as I've said many times um, up until tonight. And I, I'm just, I'm trying to keep the emotions, you know, cause this is an emotional um, thing for me, but Shelby, congratulations. My best wishes to you. If ever you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm all about listening, literally and helping you to navigate through spaces um, if you get stuck or if you just need someone to to talk to um we're here for you so again thank you best wishes and i just want to say class of 96 was the best <laughs> class of 2012. <laughs> Berman. Oh, wow. Berman, can you hear me huh can you hear you me? loud and clear okay yeah thank you loud and clear so oh, i'm 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 putting this out here now. Next year for a Vols High Homecoming Week, New Focus is going to sponsor a Spirit Week because all these different classes going back and forth. How many people can you have on your podcast at one time? Uh, like many, yes. Quite a few. Will. To make it manageable. Uh, probably give me the number, probably. Probably huh? up to like 10. 10? Like okay. 10. So we're going to get like some 10. different classes about 10 we're gonna get some different classes yeah. and we're gonna just let them battle it out because everybody's saying they're the best so new right. focus is gonna sponsor a voice high spirit week and um we're gonna we're gonna put that on the calendar early because you know you fill up quick i think homecoming is usually in october and shelby we want okay. you okay. because you're gonna represent for 2023 okay shelby okay i sure we'll will be able to do a follow-up with you so y'all mark your calendars for that i'm serious because i love the school spirit you know i love it so Thank y'all again. Man, that's what's up. Most definitely. And we're going to do that. Uh, Keisha, go ahead and give your final remarks. The best class for last. The best class for last. Class of 2002. Um, mm. Again, congratulations, <laughs> Jim. And to all those who are watching that are graduating, besides the limit, what you do today will affect your tomorrow. The only person that can stop you is yourself. So look ahead, dream big work hard and you're going to be destined for play. That's it. Man, that sums it up right there. Go ahead. Uh, wow. So, Chevy got a lot of love here tonight. Everybody shared, they shared with you from their heart. They're proud of you. As a matter of fact, you, uh, Marty mentioned the award ceremony. Hey, tell us, tell us a story about the award ceremony for those who wasn't there. i seen the pictures online, but uh, take us a Let's take us through that journey on that award ceremony when you got presented uh, with the scholarship. Take us on that journey. Go ahead. Award tonight was definitely like crazy. It didn't feel real. Um, I won several different awards. I think I counted like 11 different awards that night. Oh, wow. Um, Smart. <laughs> um, I won several different major titles. Um, I was not only presented with this award, but that's when I finally got my plaque for my full ride scholarship at LSUA. I won Mrs. AHS, actually, um, one of the highest honors that a Bulls High has. Um, the Interact Scholarship, Rotary, um, Joe Elder Service Scholarship, um, Top Scholar for Science, which fits the category. Um, with all my medical stuff and like the club award because past that um I'm trying to think what other ones it's got it's kind of hard to keep track but just everything 
one of my best nights so far because it, it was just crazy just seeing all of my hard work pay off and everything just come together and just realizing how great my community has supported me and how I've set myself up for my future. Everything just felt very complete that night, if that makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. So you got this. You really got this. And you know what? I would love for you to come back on the podcast. Give us an update on what's going on with you. We'd love to hear your story. But I miss Desiree. She's part of the team, so I know she would ask you a lot of questions, but I know she had to take care of some stuff. But we'd love for you to come back on, um, Shelby. It was an update on what's going on with you, um, your story of success. And I look forward to having everybody back on here soon with Spirit Week, of course, and we just put that together. You said for October. So we can make, definitely make that happen. So look forward to that. So everybody talking about they had the best school year and all this other stuff. Hey, represent your school year, but you know y'all got fun memories, of course. Uh, so 2000, you said you came out in 2012, right? Yes, sir. Okay. When y'all had, did have, have the people that came out, had y'all went to your high school reunions yet? I ain't oh, know. yes, sir. We had we actually we do a five year and then we actually had a ten year. So we try to do it every five years if we get everyone together. But for the most part, we try to do it every five years if we can. Yeah, I I never been to my high school. I ain't never go to my high school reunion. I never went. went. But anyway, how are the high school reunions are anyway. You just y'all talk about the old times where everybody's oh. at and everybody's talking about they did this and they did that. I didn't know who you married her and all this other stuff. You know, just oh. the memories. That's what it's all about. Yes, sir. <laughs> and also, so let us know how we can get in touch with y'all here on the panel. Are y'all on social media? If so, go ahead and plug in your social media. Whether you're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat. I don't do, I'm not on Snapchat. But um, go ahead and plug in your social media. If you're on social media, go ahead and plug in how people can follow you. Go ahead. I'm going to start with Shelby. Um, for professional business related things or like to get in contact for another podcast, um, email me at shelbyjohnston2021 at gmail.com. Uh, Shelby Johnston, all lower cases, all together. Um, I do have social media, but I kind of, I don't really like post too much. Um, I do work with Stanford Reach Lab Yab, and I do a lot of media posts for them. So personally, I don't really use social media. That way, I kind of keep it private. So, but if y'all need me, contact me either Facebook I use sometimes or my Gmail is the best way. Oz, <laughs> you know what? Keep that mindset. Keep that mindset. I know you'll keep that mindset. Watch out for them distractions and watch out for them leeches. And I say them leeches, you got these people try to leech on you. Watch out for them leeches. Never, never let nobody ride you to six. Somebody always told me that a long time ago, Chevy. Never let nobody ride you to six because some people try to ride you to six. Don't let them ride you to six. So keep it a great word. Uh, Marty, go ahead. Oh, Lord, that's a lot. Uh, so. <laughs> For personal, I you can use my uh, my email address. Uh, it's all lowercase Martin M A R T I N Jacobs J A C O B S zero six twenty eight at gmail dot com. And then I also have on different platforms. I also have Facebook, which I really I post a good bit, but mostly like just old memories, things like that, and sharing a couple of things. And my Instagram, I really don't really use as much, but it's still active. But uh, my Facebook page. Uh, I think my email address, if you use my email address, it'll still pop up. If so, if you'll see a Joe Burrow jersey, that's me. Because I love me some Joe Burrow. <laughs> also, uh, Mr. Sam, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm old. Um, for, so I don't really do the big social media thing. Um, I normally just network with whatever charity groups are in the, art, um, in the local community. Uh, but if you do come up with some ideals or something, you can hit me up on Facebook, Samuel Dupas. Um, you'll see the profile. 
but I'm the only active during football season, as anybody on this panel can, can tell you. I'm a big Saints supporter, and it's always our year. So, <laughs> are you a Saints fan? Yes, Saints, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Ah. <laughs> you know what? You, should, well, you know what? Represent your team. It's all about America's team over here, baby. Cowboys all day, every day. Look at my Cowboys hat on. All From day. Day. I just, I just, I got my hat on, but it's so about the Cowboys. That's America's team. No, I ain't on America's team. It's about that star, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so I could be found here on Facebook by my name, Lataj Woods, or by the business name, New Focus um, Family You Consultant, and on IG, New Focus 22. And that, that song put up right there. Go ahead, uh, Miss Sonia. Um, Facebook, I'm under Sonia Tesaurus, um, but you can also follow me and reach me at my business page, which is Positively Affirmed with Sonia Tesaurus. And on Instagram, it's Positively underscore Affirmed Sonia. And that's what's up. And Miss Keisha, go ahead. Um, I'm not really big on social media, but I can be contacted on Facebook at Keisha Hill. And then also via email, Keisha.Hill at gmail.com. And that's what's up. And oh, by the way, if y'all got any events going on, get with the corn. The corn will promote your events all day, every day. He's very big into that. So y'all got anything coming up, get with the corn. The corn is very good at what he do. I just want to plug that out there, the corn. Thank you. Yeah, y'all can send me anything. I, I promote it. I make a video. I do something, but it's free too. So I just do it because you know we gotta start supporting one another. It's, you know, just of GP. So. Yeah, thank y'all all. all. My duffel bag is full of gems, so you know, big shout out to all y'all too. Big shout out, congratulations, to you Shelby, for that. Um, I really appreciate how area diet you are, so um, I picked up on that and I just sell my tape with myself. <laughs> and that's what's up, man. So y'all have a great night. Enjoy your night. Also remember this: remember the graveyard. Everybody had one thing in common. They thought they were going to see tomorrow, and they didn't. Let's live life like it's our last. When I say that, make the best out of your life. Don't procrastinate. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today because tomorrow is not promised to none of us, let alone five seconds. So let's utilize our life life like it's our last. And most important, keep grinding, keep studying, keep educating yourself. Get some mentor. If you don't have a mentor, find you a good mentor. Somebody that will help guide you along the way as well. We're going to be back here Saturday morning at 10 a.m. here on Walking This Wave Impact Wars Podcast. We know the month of May we're doing the new faces of Dallas. And I know, um, Miss Wood, you're here in Dallas, of course. And I know you're part of the new faces of Dallas. So, you know, really we're showcasing Shelby, Louisiana, but also showcasing you and many others. But also you by you being here in the DFW. So, Matter of fact, um, this was, how can people get part of the organization? How can they support it? Um, any speaking engagement that you'll be doing? What, what's going on with New Focus right now also? Wow. Well, personally, I'm just trying to finish out the school year, but um, I have a couple of things going on. Of course, the TORCH program, I just presented last night um, with the city of Fort Worth with um, Rise, Rising Star Leadership Academy. And I have an event coming up with Keisha Sanchez. Um, you know, she does a lot of networking in W. Yes, the Women with Purpose tour, and Sonya's gonna be on that tour, her and her daughter in Houston in September. So that's literally right around the corner because the months fly by. And then also, um, oh, I want to introduce two people on here that's a part of my team. So Keisha Hill, she's family, that's my cousin. She's also my chief operations officer. So she's behind the scenes holding it down in Louisiana. Um, she presented to Shelby last week. And then Martin Jacobs, Party Marty, he's the event coordinator. And they're gonna be working on some things because I'm here in Texas, but like I say, my loyalty is always gonna be to Louisiana first. You know, that's just hands down. So it's a family affair. Shout out to my sister, Shavetta Jones. She sells in marketing. So I'm putting together a team Sonya and I are going to do some things because she's a counselor and she does a lot of great things on mental health. 
and this month is mental health um, month. So I want her to say one quick thing about that. And then also my cousin, Sam, I definitely want to bring him in on some things with that male mentoring and also the veteran part, because a lot of young men need structure and I can present to you, but when it comes to these young boys, sometimes you need that breakout session. And um, I'm just so proud of everybody on here tonight. It was God that led me to do this. And I see why, because I know a boss parish pride is not just a slogan. It's definitely in full effect here tonight. So yeah, that's that that's what's up, what's going on with me. So son, you could just awesome. say some mental help before we um close out because you know, we know there's a lot going on. Absolutely. So May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And basically what myself as well as every other clinician worldwide, I think, is really trying to do is make sure people understand the importance of their mental health, because just like your physical health is important, so is your mental health. And if, it's, if one is off balance, I can promise you the other one is going to be off balance. And just being okay with not being okay, but being okay with the thought of talking to somebody and having somebody help you and support you and navigate you through those difficult spaces because where you are won't last always, but it could if you don't get the proper support and help that you need to manage and get through those things that you're dealing with. So again, if anybody ever needs me, I'm here. I am here. Thank you. And thank you all very much for what y'all are doing and keep up the great work. And like I said, we're about to get ready to get off the air um, this evening. Man, y'all have a great, great night. Enjoy your night. Enjoy your weekend that's coming up. And like I said, we're going to be back here Saturday morning here on Walking This Way in that Boys Podcast. And by the way, if you're on our YouTube channel, go ahead, click, subscribe, comment, hit that notification button. You will get, we air every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. You will get a new episode once you hit that notification button as well. So, y'all will have a great night. We'll see you here Saturday morning here on Walking This Way in Pat Boys Podcast. Peace, everybody. Have a great night. Good night, night. everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.